There's something else which is not helping you as a researcher. And that very soon, or maybe just at the beginning, you will speak to people who have no clear background in science or engineering to really understand what you're saying. What When you explain, they, they don't have the background to understand what you're saying. So you are on the side of the river, try to explain what you did, why it was so novel, uh, the way that you combine things, etc. And on the other side of the river, you have people who actually don't mind too much about this, but are concerned with some aspect of your project, which you have no clue, probably, or you put something in your business plan, and uh, no information. So the only thing you can do is to say, okay, uh, my, uh, my invention is protected. And secondly, all this information are in my business plan. And they will, if they are nice, they will look at your business plan and probably chances that your business plan is not a solid and a realistic project will be high. So they will probably discard your project because they think your expectations are not realistic. Step six, now begins the easy part. You have a patent, you have a business plan, and you got some money from agencies or from companies. The next step is to know how you will use this money and happily you have your business plan and in your business plan you explain clearly what you will do with the money you get. In this business plan, probably you've noticed that you are a good scientist, a good engineer, but you are not very good at business. So one of the first things you will do will be to hire a business expert, someone with an MBA, someone with good experience. And you will start to create your team and pay people to build your team. Because these people, uh, something they can do, they know how to, it's to really uh, put numbers in Excel spreadsheet and convince uh, any investors that there will be the model, the business model, financial model, and this is how things will happen. And this is why uh, you need more support. So that will be the, your step. You got money and you know perfectly how to spend it. And the way to spend it initially, it's actually to hire people who can take in charge the business side for you. Now we have reached step seven. And step seven is really the most easy way. Of course, it's a hard work, but look at what you have achieved until now. You have a patent. You have a business plan, you have money, you have a team. So what you must do is to execute the plan with a team by using the money and hoping that you have enough money. And it's important that you stick to the plan. Why? Because this business plan is so brilliant. It's a bunch of smart people who made it and they look at all the steps and all the challenge and all the things that could happen. And you know for sure, you know for sure that if you follow all these logical steps, you will meet success with a probability of 100%. And this is a third major problem. Because as you committed to this plan, your only concern is to stick to, with it and to be sure that you reach all my stones you have defined as any serious company would do. And what you will say the day you've reached the final milestone, you meet the team and you say, mission accomplished. And here you are at the last step 
of your logical path to success in innovation. And this last step, it's just to commercialize your discovery, your invention, your product, your system. You discover something. This something was new, that was your innovation. You build a project, you build a structure, you build a team, you got money to develop your solution according to your plan. And you have now your product on the shelf and ready to go and ready to be sold to people. So just go out and have some people ready to buy your solution. Congratulations. And this is the actual good question. Should you celebrate now? Have you achieved any success in developing your innovation when you follow these eight logical steps? Do they take you to success or do they take you to failure? So before you celebrate, uh, let's have a look at these numbers. These numbers are the results that the Fortune magazine collected in 2014 asking co-founders of startup who failed the reason for their failure. And surprisingly, the main reason for failure is not that they run out of money, it's not because they didn't have the good team, etc. It's for 40%, 42 actually, is that once they had developed their product, the solution, and went through the plan and developed everything, got the funding, created the, the, the meat, the, the meat, the team, etc and started to sell, they just noticed that there was no market need. That means people didn't want to buy their product. And that's something along these eight logical steps to develop your innovation. And the development was that we discovered an innovation and our path was to commercialize it. And something we forgot all along this path was to ask people who could potentially buy it, would you buy it? This, in other words, do you need what we are developing? And do you need what we are developing the way we develop it, the way we design it? And this is the main reason why the eight logical steps, as I said, each makes perfect sense and each are perfectly well known and totally logic. This is why the probability for these eight logical steps to take you to success in innovation will be very close to zero if you forgot from day one that the innovation is not when you commercialize uh, or try to commercialize uh, an invention. An innovation is when people use or buy what you have developed. So if it's not the right way to be successful in innovation, how could you proceed? How could we do what should we do first? That's something I invite you to watch in some other videos of this program, Innovation for Scientists. Thank you for watching.